Hey everybody, welcome to my first Caden Life tutorial, um, or at least the first Caden Life tutorial that you should watch if you are starting Caden Life. Um, what I mean by that is I did create a Caden Life tutorial on how to rotate clips, um, but now I'm going to start at the beginning if you don't know about Caden Life. You're going to have to know a little bit though about video editing and how it works. I'll explain a little bit once I get into Caden Life, but if you have like absolutely no idea how video editing works, um, this kind of kind of be tough. You'll have to play around with it to fully understand it, but um, you'll see what I mean once I start. So don't click away from this video just yet until you see that. So um, if you installed Caden Live already, um, you'll be good to go for now. But if you didn't, then you'll have to click on my video that I have in the description of how to install Caden Live on your computer. So here I have the Caden Live project window that will open up if I start a new project. If it doesn't, it'll automatically select this preset. I won't get into the presets yet. Um, this is just essentially saying that it is HD, and it's going at 30 FPS rounding up. So 30 FPS, YouTube will count this as 30, not 29.97 or something. It'll tell you it's 30. This is what our Kid in Live would look like before we start a project. So, in here, um, you might even notice that your whole interface looks completely different than mine. Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is um, when you're trying to find a new video editor and then you find Caden Live and you're like, hmm, it seems like a good video editor, articles tell me it's good, and then you get, uh, you install it and it's white theme. You're like, ew, nope, go away. I was like, wait, there better be a dark theme for this because otherwise I'm not using this because that is not good on the eyes. Um, you're just going to go to settings, color scheme, and click a darker theme, like breeze dark. And... Um, Sometimes the icons don't look right at the sides here, so you're gonna use so a good way to do this is either click the thing again to refresh the theme, and then if that doesn't work, check force breeze icon theme. Another thing is your layout is going to be different. So I have my layout set up a certain way. You can move around anything. You can move around these tabs in here, you can move them to different sections and do all sorts sorts of things with it. You can uh drag on this really thin blue line over here and move the this thing up and down. Do a lot of things with your interface to tailor it to how you like it. Mine is a specific layout. Um, if you want to have my layout for whatever reason, just pause the video and change it to here. Um, if you want to add any of these, if you don't have it, um, if you want to add one of these view things, you'll just click view and then make sure it's checked and you can move it around. Then to save your layout so that it automatically um, is always shown to you, um, you see these layouts at the top here, right? My layout that I'm on right now is called My New Layout. You'll just go to View, um, you'll click Save Layout, you'll name it, and then once you go in there, you'll click Manage Layouts, and then you will, uh, if let's say Color was our new one, we'd move it to the top so you can access it from over here. Um, I don't like color right now, because I'm not dealing with color right now. So, um, My New Layout is at the top, so this is this whole layout. If I click on it, it slightly changes, as you can see, because... Um, because I ha didn't save the most recent thing here, which I moved clip monitor over here and clip properties so over here as well. So I didn't get to save that. Okay, so now that you know about the viewport, um, we're going to go over importing a clip. So if you're familiar with any other video editors, you'll know that you can just drag and drop a clip from your file manager. Um, there are also other ways to do this. So uh, over here, I have a bunch of clips, uh, generic clips of the Galaxy Watch 5 that I use for my Galaxy Watch 5 videos. Um, and I'm just going to be you, showing you Caden Live with these videos. Um, there's another way to import them besides dragging, and that is going into the Media Browser, which is over here. You'll, If you don't have it, just go to View and check Media Browser. Um, in the Media Browser, it's just like a file manager. You'll just drag and drop it into here. So let's say I wanted um, this clip right here. So I'm just going to drag this either into the timeline or the project bin. Both will be completely fine. The only difference is that when you drag it into the timeline, it imports it to the project bin and then puts it in the timeline. But if you just do the project bin, it only puts it in the project bin and won't put it in the timeline yet. But either way, you can still do every everything. It's no, no, really no different. If I drop it into the, uh, here, you will see that I get this um, thing here. You probably won't get this, I mean, depending on your camera, but this camera has a variable frame rate, which means that it was, um, it, tr it changes the frame rate based on the lighting, 
we can just click transcode to make this editor friendly. You can now drag this from the project bin into here. And so what the project bin is, is if you're a little confused on what that is, the project bin is uh, this big thing over here with all your clips. All your clips will be shown to you in here, and these clips reference the uh, clips in the file manager, unless it's a proxy clip, but we're not going to get into that. So these clips um, are deletable. You can delete them to remove them from your project. If you remove them from your project, they'll all be removed from the timeline. You can click on a clip to see its properties, um, or no, not the properties, but the clip monitor to just play the whole clip itself, just like that. And then um, you can go here to clip properties or just click on clip properties over here and you'll get to change things in here. I'm not going to get too deep into things like this just yet since this is just for beginners. So when you have a video editor, you're going to most likely be using more than one video unless you're just cutting something out in the middle of one. So we're going to drag and drop another video into our project. We're going to use this video. I'm going to drag and drop this one, tr transcode it, and as you can see, the clip is now down here and in the project bin. Depending on where you drag it, the clip will appear in your timeline in a different spot. Make sure all your clips are right next to each other, because if they're not, then you'll render a full clip, and then black space for lots and lots of time, and then finally, your clip. You're going to want to move this over here. There's a keyboard shortcut to be able to move a space from all tracks. I have set it to Shift 2, but um, that is just personal preference. Um, if you want to do that, you'll go to Settings keyboard shortcuts, configure keyboard shortcuts, and you'll just type remove space, and then it says remove space in all tracks, um, at is shift 2, because it's that's how you type at, and so that will remove the space in all tracks. And if you still don't really understand what removing the space is, you see here's, there's this big space right here, right? Um, if I move my playhead, which is this over here, I'll move my playhead into this blank space, I'll click shift 2, and it just removes that space and it moves the clip all the way to this other clip to meet the other two clips. And so um, that's how you would uh, change that clip like that. So when we have our clips like this, um, you can move them, move them to different tracks. These four things over here are called different tracks. These are these two are audio tracks and these two are video tracks. And so if you move this clip up to the video track and the lower audio track, you can move this over here and the video will start here um, because Kaden Live works from top to bottom. Whatever is shown on the top will be shown and then the clip under it. For example, if I added a transition into this clip, I could click this purple dot and this would do a simple cross dissolve transition. It is making this clip transparent um, until it gets to here. So it slowly becomes transparent because whatever's under the clip is now being shown. So um, another way to do this is you could do a fade in. So if I wanted to fade in the project, I would go to the top of a clip and then just move this slider thingy. Now it fades in. And then, like I said, another way to do this is you could just fade in this clip like this. So then that one fades in like that. Uh, if you want to see it a little bit slower, um, here I'll have the fade in. Make sure that the fade in doesn't go beyond the clip that's under it, because then this will happen. The clip under it just disappears right, uh, right like that, because there's nothing under it for it to show, because that's how Kid Life works. It's very, very powerful, so it's not gonna try to fix every little thing for you because it wants to give you all these options. So this is just something I f just forgot to mention. Right now, I'm literally editing the video you're watching right now. And um, I forgot to mention that you won't be able to get these dots. You see these dots that I've been telling you to click, the uh, transition dots or the fade in dots. You're not going to be able to click these if you're too zoomed out. So if you're zoomed out like this, um, sorry, they're sometimes hard to, yeah, right there. You're not going to be able to, s to click on them. They're not going to be there. You're gonna, that's when you're going to have to zoom in. I'll show you how to do that in a bit, but the easiest way is just control scroll. You'll zoom in on your tracks and then these dots will appear. Um, just something really quick for you to, um, so that I could show you how to do that. So uh, the next thing is trimming a clip. If you liked your clip but you didn't want the beginning in here, as you can see, when I started with my camera, um, it was I didn't move it yet, so it starts moving about right here, right. So if I wanted to trim this clip, what I could do is I could either go to the edges of these clips like this and just move it into there. And a lot of times, wherever your playhead is it'll snap to that so it is very precise. 
If you don't want that, you can zoom in. So the way to zoom in is go down here and move this slider, or you can click the plus and minus button, or you can do control scroll. And if you zoom in on here, you can edit frame by frame. So I could not make it snap to the playhead. Another way to trim a clip like this is um, wherever your playhead is, you click on the clip, make sure that clip is selected and not a different clip. You will click on the um, clip once the playhead is here, and you'll just do Shift R, which is the default keyboard shortcut, to split a clip. So now you have two uh, splitted clips, and you can remove this clip by pressing the Delete key. Not the Backspace key, but the Delete key. I actually have my keyboard shortcut set to X, because if you're familiar with uh, Blender or any other um, graphic design things, a lot of times their keyboard shortcuts are tailored to have your left hand on all of the keys and your right hand on the mouse, so you won't have to move any of your hands across the keyboard or anything like that, so that you can edit really fast and more efficiently. So that's why I set mine to X. Um, if you want to do that, just go over to Configure Keyboard Shortcuts, Delete, and do Delete se Selected Item. Not Delete Clip or anything else, it's Delete Selected Item. Whatever is selected in Caden Live, you'll delete it. Um, if it's just a clip, and you try to remove an effect, it's not going to delete. So, it's as simple as that. So here I have my project. I'm going to move, as you can see, you can't add a transition unless you move it up over here. So I'm going to add this wipe transition. And so here we have this, um, this project right here. That just looks like this. And we can have a fade out over here, if you wanted. If you notice, there is audio attached to these clips. The audio is under it. So, um, right now the audio is grouped to the clip, meaning wherever the clip goes, the audio will go, and it moves um, to different tracks with the audio, with the video, sorry. So, you can um, edit this audio separately if you want by clicking Ungroup Clips or Control shift g And now you can move these separately, so if I wanted to remove the audio, I could just delete the audio, and if I don't like the audio there, and now you can. Uh, the way to group a clip is just control is just to uh, select both of these by doing click and then shift click. You can shift click as many things as you want, um, but click one of them, shift click the other, control G. Now they're grouped again. So with audio, you have uh, the ability to um, fade in and fade out and stuff like that as well. So if you're wondering about that, you can do that as well. And so, uh, let's say that I wanted my clips to not be as jittery like this, and I wanted them to be in slow motion so that they go slower. These videos are actually 60 FPS videos, meaning that they have 60 frames every second. As you can see, my video is 30 frames every second. So if I slowed this down, it would cut 60 in half and bring it to 30. So if I change the speed to 50, it would still look completely normal for this project because everything is 30 frames every second. If you don't understand this, don't worry about it because it's just, um, sometimes I'm just going to go a little bit too deep into it just so that uh, for those who understand more about video editing. So here you can see that my video is in slow motion. If I made this any slower though, it would be really choppy because um, it doesn't have a high enough frame rate to do that. A lot of times when the audio is slowed down as well, the audio gets deeper, so you could just um, click pitch compensation, which makes the clip normal, which makes the audio normal, but it's still slow. So I'm just going to remove the audio by ungrouping it and deleting the audio. So here we have a clip that fades in, transitions to a slow motion video, and then fades out over here. Let's say I wanted to add text that said Galaxy Watch 5. I could go over here at the top of the project bin, click the arrow up here, add title clip, and now we can add a title clip into our project. Over here, um, make sure you have show background checked so that you can choose where your text is so you don't have to keep guessing. And then you can either have grid on or off, which just kind of uh, makes it so you can't move the text wherever you want. Um, as you can see, it's kind of stuck to a specific grid. If I removed it, now I can just move it wherever I want. It really just depends on what you're trying to do. So let's just type Galaxy Watch 5. And in this text we have a lot of different options. Um, we have the ability to change the size, the font, the formatting, the color of it, and the alignment. So uh, if I wanted to move this text to the center, you wouldn't click the center align. This centers it in uh, within the text box. You're going to have to click on this, which centers it horizontally. And then we can click this one to center it vertically. 
If we wanted it to be centered uh, horizontally, but then go to the top, we can click here, which brings it to this line, this red line over here at the top. Or we can click it again, and it goes higher up. Or we can click it again, and it goes right to the top of the project. And then after that, it goes above the project, which is not something that I want. So you can just have it here. And once you're done with that, you'll click Create Title. And now we have a new clip in the project bin. We can drag this over to our project. Sometimes you're not going to be able to fit it into certain spots. So you're going to have to put it somewhere else, trim it, and move it over. Still not good enough. Here it is. Okay. So now we have this title clip. We can show the title clip. As you can see, it shows up at the top right away. If you want to uh, fade it in, you can go like that. And there's a lot of different ways to deal with titles. This is just a very simple title. Okay, next thing we're going to learn about is saving a project because sometimes your computer might crash or kid life might crash or anything could happen. You want to save your project unless it's a really, really quick edit. So we're going to click the save button up here or control S. We're going to choose the file name. So I'm going to do um, test.kidenlive and then click save. So we'll click continue here. And so now we have our project and it's saved to a file on our computer. Now, um, let's talk about rendering the project or exporting it. So, um, if you didn't have the save button up at the top, or anything of uh, any of, anything of that sort up at the top over here, you're going to have to go into Settings, Toolbar Shown, and then make sure both of these two are checked so that you can go to Render. So, to render our project to a file, a video file, we're going to click Render. You can choose your profile over here. If you're dealing with 4K footage, you're going to go under here. If you're not, you go over here. Most of the time, you're either going to do an MP4 or a WebM. I'm going to do an MP4 since this is more common. And over here, you can select more options to get some more options. And some of the stuff you're not going to have to worry about right now, but you can choose the encoder to be faster uh, or slower. Sometimes, um, And sometimes people ask would ask why you would want it to be slower and just not as fast as possible and that's just because when it's faster the video is slightly um, less quality it has some compression in there but if you want it to be as fast as you can move it up here we have the threads of our computer if you move them higher up of course the project will be rendered out faster but more of your computer's resources will be used so if you're doing something else with a high demand on your computer you won't be able to do it as well here we can click parallel processing, which also makes it a little bit faster. But I'm not going to get too. Um, I'm not going to talk about make speeding up renders or anything right now. So once you're done with that, you'll simply click render to file. And over here in the job queue, we have the render. It'll tell you how much time, what frame it's at, and how fast it's going. Once our project is rendered out, we can then check it out in our videos folder. So over here, as you can see, we have that new file. If I opened up this file. Sorry, I have to move it to my lower monitor. Um, here we are with our new file that was just rendered out. That is how you will render a file in Kdenlive. Um, those are just the basics of Kdenlive. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. And if you have any um, requests for more kid in live videos i'll be glad to make those as well so if you enjoyed this video please subscribe share it and i'll see you next time